Well, hello, guys. Um, all right, so today we're going to be working on the 1930s MG. That's the one one over there. I'm uh, waiting on some more parts for the Buick Bug. Today we're going to be working on the steering shaft as well as mounting up the torque converter, and we'll talk about those things as we go. So let's go ahead and head back outside. Where we have our setup for this. Okay, so uh, doing a threaded rod here. Okay, and so now I gotta do the other side here. That's the jam nut for the eye rod. So I have A 3 8 24 left handed thread uh, die here and a die uh, handle. So you always want to make sure that the side that you're starting on has the lettering. Okay, this one's a little tricky because it's both tapered in. Uh, some of the other dies, which I put away already, uh, it's simple, but yeah, you always want to start on the letter side. And then I'm going to do it kind of like speed tapping. I'm going to do it kind of quick through the machine here. So I just got my uh, Ryobi drill here and just clamp down on this. Now, being that it's left handed, I have to then put the drill in reverse so that way it's ready to cut. So let's go ahead and move you in a little closer. Okay, and then I have a bottle of uh, Tap Magic to, for some cutting oil. I'm going to put it up on there. Now it's going to pretty much come off of here, but we'll just put a little bit on there. Put it in reverse. Line it up. And the things are a little loose, so that way I can't turn it. Now the vice is on a, a mobile cart, so I just have to hold it here. And then reverse it to break the cut. Reverse it, break the cut. I'm gonna reverse it all the way off. This way you can see already the cuts on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more cutting oil now that I have some threads in there. There. So then reverse to go in. The reason I went with the drill was to, uh, it's hard to hold this rod and turn the die. So, I'm not some the savings there. Go, cutting oil, cutting oil. Did forget to mark this. What I like normally, which I couldn't find any, I have a little paint brush, uh, little acid brushes, I think is what they're called. Just a little silver handle. I'm going an inch and a half of threads. So that way there's enough for the tie rod and for the jam nut.
You want to keep that cleared as best you can. That way, when you cut the threads, it doesn't keep interfering with the new pieces. And then if you were to be doing this by hand, tapping or dying, generally what you want to do, now there's you know, several different methods out there, but it's generally what I've always done is one on and two off. I catch back up, one on, two off. That way it breaks off these uh, cuttings and keep them clear out of the way. At least that's what I teach my students. Almost there. Okay. So there we are. A little warm. Okay. Go ahead and head back into the shop now. And catch up with the next part. So here's the uh, front end. We get to maybe a better view. Sorry, so I had a this. Yeah, a little better. So here's our front. Here's the dry uh, steering shaft. And that's what we worked on last time was the steering shaft itself. I've already done this arm here, okay? And so it's already set, go ahead and turn, okay. there we go. Now we're gonna be working on this side. Okay. So these are the, High end, high rod ends that I got off of McMaster. The ones with the line are reverse threaded. And so I'm going to be working on my next part. And that's uh, going to be putting on the jam nut, which is a left handed threaded nut. Let me go ahead and get that on there. The trick is always trying to remember that it is a left handed thread. I think that's a right handed thread. I might have grabbed the wrong one. All right. And the threads on there is a little, still a little tight. I'm just clamping it down and then what I'm doing now is just sitting there taking the wrench that has the nut and leave it on. Let's see, I didn't quite get it. Um, we'll get it down there. Give me just a, there we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and take this back inside and go back to our other camera. Oop. Reverse them now, reverse them. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I got the jam nuts in. Okay, this is a 3 8 rod that I'm using. 
And then let's go ahead. I have this one already bolted in, so I'm just going to put it in there and thread it in. I'm going to move this down here. That is right handed thread or traditional thread. Okay. Okay. And drop that in there. Make sure that that's nice and straight. So this is a little toad in. So this is where I could take this. This is why we want a left-handed and a right-handed thread, because now, whoop, let me put the nut on there. So these will be nylon lockers eventually, but right now I'm using just nuts because I don't want to exhaust the nylon on the lockers. And then most likely these won't just be nylon lockers. So I'll use castle nuts and I'll drill a hole in the bolt. And I'll show that in another video. All right, so I'm looking at the other spindle. And I'm looking at this one, so I need to stretch it out a little. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and the jam nuts. I'm being three eighths rug. Generally, you can use a wrench. Generally, Barbuka doesn't think so. Okay, and then the other one. These jam nuts always made me laugh and think of a story. One of the first times I was teaching alignments, he had replaced his tie rod ends and jam nuts, just like the old proverbial brake line. He left, he slipped the box in on, tightened it, and then put it all on together. And now he had a wrench hanging from there. So, yeah, you want to make sure you use an open end. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and Bring up some elevation here. So right now I have the 5 8 shaft. It this plate that is just tacked weld in. Okay, right. let me go ahead and get the black jaws off. There we go. And then we have them both together. Now these pivot pretty easily on the eye, but there's no play inside there. And so now I could sit there and Turn that one. That maxes out over here. And then I turn it the other way. And it maxes out there. And it doesn't, this rod hasn't hit the 5 8 rod here. So that makes it nice. So it doesn't flip over. Okay. So there's the steering. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a small cup right here with a three quarter inch that will come down off of this bracket and it'll just catch that. This can actually slide a little forward. So and that's the goal is it just goes there. That way this is nice and close. Once again, this will be a castle nut with a powder pin or wired safety in it. And then a, a bearing to catch the end of this shaft here. All right, so let's go ahead and look up here on the top side. On the top side, I just grabbed a steering wheel. I'm not even sure where this one came from. This is set for a three quarter inch shaft and spline. Got lots of little dust flying in there. So, mostly I just want to kind of get an idea of where that's, you know, 
somewhere close so it's got to come down the spline is for an older go-kart style that we were doing i've ordered a quick release that fits a 5 8 shaft so that will be on our next video we're looking at probably putting the steering wheel somewhere around there and obviously this will be trimmed to fit so there we go we got the front end steering done Uh, looking really good, nice and smooth. Okay, there's no slop in the bar. Okay, so that's really nice. All right, so now on to our second part of the video. That's going to be putting together a CBT. So go ahead and get all that together. Mute that. Just flip it through all of them. Let's go back to there. Okay. I'm going to get this camera inside. This is a nicer one. Coming in to get away from the glare side. That's what a one band band looks like, guys. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is a Predator 212. This one is one that I ran on the Buick Bug for a while. I ran a couple different engines. I ran a Briggs and Stratton. Then a this Predator, and then I ran a Honda DX. So I've been working on the Honda, and I'll be showing that off. And then I have another Briggs and Stratton that was um, that I contacted with them about. So I'm tempted to use the Briggs and Stratton just because American made. It's built in America. It's the same single cylinder engine. It just there's no performance parts for it. So the best I could do is getting a, sorry, a uh, the carburetor and removing the governor, but that's about it. So, all right, so there's that. Let me, just testing everything. Sorry. Oh, I'm not sure if anybody asks any questions. Uh, so what I have here is the, probably one of the cheapest, uh, four converter sets that you can get from Amazon. Uh, I bought this a while ago, so I don't even remember. I should have kept better track of it, but it's the Ryback. <laughs> I remember right, I think it's only about 50 bucks or so. But here's the cover, not that we would be using it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and finish unboxing. Belt, uh, something I don't know. If most of you guys should know on cycle cards, but those that are new, the belts actually have two sides to them. We have a tapered side and then a flat side. Okay. 
Now, as we get this apart, that makes a big difference, and that will make a difference when it comes to burning up belts. So we want to make sure that we know which side's which, okay? So I'm just going to put these in the little parts I have down here. All right, and this one has a red spring. This plate's a little, this rivet's gone loose. All right. I have to fix that. What I'm looking at is there's rivets right here that come and hold this plate. And those rivets didn't get finished pressed. So, which is not to worry because I go to the other side of my shop real quick. Lo and behold, I have another one. You build go karts at school, you get all these parts that end up the students mess up and then I fix them. So that's one, the rivets are there. You can't crush it back. So if that becomes an issue, but I think I'll be able to just fix it. I do have an upgraded spring. You can upgrade these by changing the spring into these pens will make a big difference. We'll review those. What I'll probably do, because I know I have enough, is I'll run the same red spring, three different spots, and we'll do some trial runs. Because I'm kind of curious, you know, being a $30 one, and I have a bunch of these, so. All right, that's that part. And then, now I loaned this CBT to somebody to see if it would fit their little go kart They're zipping around the streets here, and. They burned up their centrifugal clutch. So I suggested this, but you put it on the go-kart, it took too much. And so it's a little dirty and we were trying to try it on the go-kart. Oh, there's some pieces down here. Okay, right, now I'm gonna set that down there. I'm gonna go back into the box. Spacer, nut, obviously. This is that nylon locker I was talking about. So it has nylon inside that nut. And as you take it on and off so many times, the threads will impregnate and cut in there and then they stay permanent and then it loses its really its ability. Okay, so inside here, this is the part that goes against the engine. The, the centrifugal springs, these can also be upgraded. Um, now, when it comes to these, you don't wanna use a wet, liquid for lubrication, kind of like a graphite, kind of back to the Pinewood Derby days, okay? Series of nuts and bolts, a brass ring. We'll talk about that as we put it together. And that is it, empty box. All right. So, here's our engine. Now on the MG, I'm going to run it in this direction um then the chain comes this way i wish they sold these plates in a different mix meaning that okay you can have it on this side or then you can have it on this side to stiffen it up uh some of uh well a lot of you guys have trimmed these you can just be careful you don't take too much you can reinforce i've seen some people reinforce this coming out to here um, and just giving it a little additional strength. So we don't want we don't want that breaking uh, all the on and off as it goes. So, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and grab our baggy goodies. Oh, let me talk a little bit about them. So we I run a forty one chain. Now a forty one chain doesn't mean that it's any better than a thirty five chain. It's bigger, it's a bigger chain, which then causes some issues when you want to get a larger sprocket. So a lot of everybody's running a 35, it's fine. I run a 41 because that way I don't have to have multiple chains. The races that we do at my school all require a 41 chain. So why have a 35 chain and then a 41 chain and then have to deal with trying to keep track of those. So this is why I stick to that. So, yep. 
Looks like a piece is missing out of the box. All right, so we get this little one. Let's go to we'll come on here after we get the plate on. I'll just make sure that fit on there really well. Uh, okay. So the first thing I'm going to put on is the plate. And it comes with screws for this. Now, I would use Loctite on this, and I generally will use red Loctite. You can break red Loctite. Okay, so went to the middle hole. There we go. Double check when I get this one lined up. Yeah. So this one's sitting really low, and so it's going to actually stick down. I'm going to build a little guard for it, especially when I go do my lab madness. That race is brutal on cycle carts, and it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us for that one this year or next. So, okay. Those are the ones. These are for the covers. And this one is for, okay. Okay. So that accounts for all the bolts. It comes with four there. This one, series of washers, goes along with the brass ring. Okay. Then again, our spacer. This is a 41 chain rocket that's going to come down here. Okay. So I just need to get a wrench for that. Second. Ten millimeter. This one had some Loctite in it. Like I said, this was a run engine. So a little stiff on there. Now I wouldn't run a uh, locking screwdriver. Screwdriver, sorry, a locking washer on there because I. Wouldn't want to gouge up the aluminum plate. So. I don't know if you see this little dust blowing by. Got a cottonwood flumen. Beautiful day here in Utah. So this engine had the governor uh, gear removed, but the shaft is still in there. So that way I have it for uh, control. The oil was removed. That's the cable to go to the oil. Dennis just did a video and he was talking about that as he was getting his engine ready. It's kind of funny that Dennis, beautiful Studer Baker, and Steve's my, uh, grandfather, his father, sorry, his father's uh, cycle cart, they're all being built in there all in various states and so those that are just getting into the hobby there is lots of great videos and information okay so we got all those on now i will eventually be taking this all apart to uh put loctite but i just want to get this all mocked up okay so now i have this guy and the reason i have spacers is we don't want that rod being on these bolt heads we have one spacer right here Slides in. There we go. Now it gives us clearance right here. Okay. So slide that on. Now this is where the brass ring comes on. That slides right there. And then what happens is the belt sits here, and as the engine, I'm 
doing it backwards, but this engine would be spinning until we hit the gas on it in the centrifugal portion. This would then slide out, tightening the belt, causing this to engage. So when you're kind of idling, the brass ring is supposed to be there to let it slide over. Now, there's some issues with that brass ring, and let me show it to you. I'll take that piece off. So we have this part that comes right here, and we want the tapered in that direction. Now you can see the brass ring doesn't fit that whole spot, but it really comes down to this piece. So let me see if I can get a better overhead view of what's going on here. As this slides on, Line up those little keyways. There we go. So what happens is as we speed up, this will then get pulled in, and it's supposed to go over this brass ring. So right now, there's the gap. The belt would be sitting. I'm just set it on there for quick reference. <clears throat> Sorry. So, and then as you speed up, this then pulls in, and that tightens up. It's is actually way down here. When you speed up, this comes in, and there you go. So what can happen, this is what happened on both times when I ran the brass ring, is sometimes this comes down, and it will catch a lip of this ring, and then it will start deforming it. And then what will happen is this can no longer slide in. And then you're limited, as you can see. And that would happen. And then you don't get as much top end as you need. I, I've been able, uh, David asked, or Dave asked a question about these bolts that I just put in, if they ever got cooked in. You can look at the shaft. Let me get the camera a little better angled, sorry. The shaft is cooked. There we go. This shaft is right here is cooked. It's not the shininess that you would normally see from a failed clutch. And I've never had an issue with this these bolts coming out. They've always been uh, easy to remove, even with the red Loctite. So, but yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Long, short, nope. All right, so I don't run it with the brass ring. You can. I've even tried sitting there and rounding this off with some sandpaper just so that it gives it a little more lip. But what the difference is, then the belt just runs here. And, you know, as long as you keep this nice and clean, you won't have an issue. So that's what I'll do. All right, so let's go. Sorry. We got that back on. And then this, remember, we're going to go tapered in. But way as this backs off, there we go. And then the other thing is, you know why it's tapered in, is on here, there's a lip, and then it's squared off. And so that actually sits in there. So that way this is then locked, this bell is locked to the axle. So, okay, that goes there. Now there's another part that I found that's interesting. A lot of times the inexpensive kits don't come with it. I'm gonna to have to track one down and I don't wanna spend that on the camera, but it's a uh, centering pin for this. I have a few of them, so I just, I'm wondering if it didn't get, because if I go, see, that bolt doesn't catch on to anything. So I am missing that part. I know exactly where it is. <laughs> So there we go. So now let's talk about the belt. Uh, this angled cut part of the belt goes towards the bell, the flat part, the back. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the other part of the CBT. This is keyed. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this one on here. Okay. And now there's some issues here is this is rubbing here. Okay, so we have our washers for that. 
Oh, and <laughs> I forgot the biggest thing. Gear goes on first. So. Gear. Then this guy. There we go. And then what I'm going to try to do, see if I can get down this view real quick. The trick is now we have to line up. You can almost see that they're not lined up very well. This one's sitting out more, so. Off. Wait, and then I have a washer here. Have that on. Oh, not that one. Take that. Oh, that looks a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take the belt real quick. I can't reach from here. Let me <laughs> I'll put you guys back in your spot. Jeez. Okay, so see now this is, now obviously it would be the reverse. This would be spinning and not the, uh, this part. But I'm not gonna start the engine and deal with all that noise in here. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at the belt now. And I'm looking up at the alignment. And now it looks nice and straight. So there we go. So then we take the front and our piece right here. Once again, tapered edge goes in. Remember, this is the the cheapest one on Amazon. And I will find the link and add it to the video after the fact. There we go. And then, like I said, I'm missing it's a, a little black spacer that holds this into place. I'm just going to spread that there, and I'm not going to sit in the car down the parking lot. Down, yeah. So there we go. That's this. And then, once again, I'm not going to thread all this into places because it will come apart a few times to double check all the placement. So I might clock it straight down or a little bit more up. I get, I'm in the middle. So That's why I can make that determination. So. All right, uh, so that's what we got today. Let's go ahead and close this off. So thanks for joining me. Uh, as I put in the uh, information, these are one-to-one -one videos, meaning I'm building it. I'm not cutting it up. Yes, I'm doing some stuff off camera. Or I'll never get it done. Uh, I'm only doing one hour a week. So, But I'm only doing the duplicated side. So just like I did the driver side, and then now I did the passenger side on the cycle cart. So this way you guys can see the steps all the way through. And if you have questions, please, there's tons of information on Facebook and on the various uh, websites. So go ahead and hit any of those up and I'll gladly answer any questions as well. So thank you for joining me. Please uh, find me next week on Thursday. So thank you so much.